sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three, They will be divided father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Take a moment. Look at the person in front of you. Now look at the person to your right. <coughs> now look at the person to your left. Now glance at the person behind you. <coughs> For the most part, you may not know anything about the persons seated around you or you may know very little. One of them may be one of our Family Promise volunteers, or may have gone on our Mexico medical mission. One may be a scout leader, or help our youth feed the homeless in Phoenix. One may be involved in local politics, or serve as a Red Cross volunteer, and one may be living, as the poet wrote, a life of quiet desperation. You just don't know. But this you do know. They are here to hear the word and to receive the Holy Eucharist. Now, think about what the people around you could be doing this morning. Home relaxing after a hard week at work or school, perhaps with the morning newspapers, perhaps with coffee and some bagels and locks, or on a family outing, or catching up on emails and Facebook posts from friends, or playing video games, or on a bike ride, or any number of fun and interesting things to do on a Sunday morning. You just really don't know, do you? But this you do know. They are here, and you are here, and guess what? People have been looking at you, too. The message from the writer of Hebrews is as real to us today as to those who first heard it almost 2,000 years ago. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Therefore, set aside every weight and run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Look around you. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, we know little about the author or the intended audience of the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament. We can only surmise some things by the contents surmise that these are people who have been Christians for some time and are wearing out. The author is sending encouragement. Some have described those folks as pilgrims struggling toward the peace of God. The demands of the faith were becoming more than they can endure. They were ignored and marginalized by the culture around them. They were growing indifferent. They were questioning the reality of the difficult path Jesus had set before them. There were so many less difficult paths they could be following. In other words, they were a lot like us. The writer encourages them with so great a cloud of witnesses. The heroes of, the heroes of faith from Scripture the sacrifice of Jesus. The letter opens with these words. 
long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son. God continues to speak to us through the hero, heroes of the past, so great a cloud of witnesses. And God continues to speak to us through his Son. But consider this. God also continues to speak to us through the heroes of faith in our own time, through the people around us in this space, so great a cloud of witnesses. And God continues to speak to us through special people of faith in our own lives. Allow me to tell you of one such person in my life. I shared this story some years ago, but it came to me again as I sat with this scripture. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. You may know that in another life, I was a Methodist minister. And because of the large number of small Methodist churches in the Midwest, they were often served by unordained college and seminary students. As a student at Blackburn College preparing for the ministry, I was assigned to rural Methodist church in southern Illinois. There were 96 members. It was there that I met Lucille. Lucille and George were in the struggle of a young couple making a living as tenant farmers raising four children. It seemed to me that material goods for them were in really short supply. But Lucille was always one of the workers at the church. As a matter of fact, if Lucille and her children were gone, half the Sunday school was gone. When Christmas came, this lady who had lots of other places to spend limited resources gave me a pair of black socks. Over the years, I have looked back on and talked about that moment of giving. About 10 years ago, Bonnie and I were driving through southern Illinois, and I said, let's see if that little church is still there. I actually thought that the little white frame building out in the country would have been abandoned and torn down, but I wanted to see. So we turned off the interstate and then turned up what I recollected to be the right country road. Soon it was obvious that I had forgotten where to turn. To Bonnie's dismay, I lowered the car window and waved at an oncoming pickup truck, as you do out in the country. The truck stopped, the guy and I both said hello, and I said, there used to be a little Methodist church around here somewhere. Is it still here? And he replied, yes, that's my church. It's over on the next road. And I said, well, I was the pastor there in 1957 and 58. And he asked, do you remember the Ballinger family? And I said, I sure do. And he said, well, I married one of their daughters. And I asked, uh, by any chance, is Lucille still alive? And he replied, yes. She lives right up there in that White House. She's home. Go up and say hello. She would love to see you. So we drove up to the White House and knocked, and Lucille came to the door, and we introduced ourselves, and she invited us in and allowed as if she remembered me. In a visit that was all too short, we learned that she was still giving, and her quilt had won first place at the county fair that year. And I was able to tell her how much that pair of black socks had meant to me over the years. 
And wouldn't you know it, she didn't remember the socks. We parted and drove over to the next road to see the church. And to my surprise, it had had some additions, an addition on the front, an addition on the back. There was new aluminum siding, and it was nicely landscaped. And then I remembered what Lucille had said about her church during our short visit. There are only 40 of us now, but we're all hard workers. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Some are great people of faith through the ages. Others are special people of faith in our own lives. You see, God keeps speaking to us, encouraging us in the faith by dropping special people into the midst of the busyness of our lives. Other witnesses are the people around us today. We don't much about them, but this we do know. They are here, and we are here. It is in this place that together we hear the Word of God. It is in this place that again and again we become God's witnesses as we receive the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us set aside every weight and run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus as the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. As we leave this time together with the words, Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. You see, the real question is not, Who are your Lucilles? The real question is to whom are you a Lucille? Amen. Please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker, Maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man.